Email us at stories at democracynow.org. The Environmental Protection Agency has begun public hearings in Binghamton, New York, on hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, a controversial technique that mining companies use to extract natural gas from rock formations thousands of feet underground. New York Democratic Congressman Maurice Hinchy urged the EPA Monday to regulate the practice, pointing to numerous reports of water contamination related to hydraulic fracturing in states across the country. He's one of the authors of the so-called Frack Act in Congress that would regulate natural gas drilling. Supporters of gas drilling, include, including the Independent Oil and Gas Association and the African American Chamber of Commerce, noted that drilling could bring tens of thousands of badly needed jobs to the area. The hearings are part of a broad investigation by the EPA into the human health and environmental effects of fracking. The agency has sent letters to nine companies that employ the process, asking them to disclose the chemical composition of fracking fluids used. The agency also asked for information data on standard operating procedures at hydraulic fracturing sites and a list of sites where companies have carried out the process. For more on the public hearings upstate, as well as the nationwide impacts of gas drilling, I'm joined here in New York by two guests. Josh Fox is the director of the Sundance award-winning Gasland, which opens in theaters across the country this Wednesday. He was at Monday's public hearing. We're also joined by ProPublica reporter Abram Lusgarden, who has written extensively about natural gas drilling. Welcome you both to Democracy Now! Thank you. Josh, what happened at the hearing? Um, well, at the hearing, we, we saw, uh, I think it was probably a couple of hundred citizens come out and weigh in about what they thought was, should happen um, in the EPA uh, scoping um, study. The EPA has been asked to study uh, hydraulic fracturing by Congress over the next two years. And what they've done is they set up uh, several public comment sessions, one in, uh, I think it was in Dallas, and, and, and one in Denver, and one in Pennsylvania. And this was the last one in New York. There's another opportunity to testify on. September 15th, which is Wednesday. Um, and you saw people come out voicing their concerns. You also saw people come from Pennsylvania who had firsthand experience in this uh, problem. And some rather astounding information came out, I think, yesterday about new res results from water contamination in Dimmick. Uh, so it was actually it was, there were, it was a rally, there were protests, um, and there was a lot of testimony. It was actually really And what really was that, some of that uh, astounding information from well, Pennsylvania? Well, one of the residents in Dimmick who had not disconnected her water supply, Victoria Schweitzer, came out and she f had found confirmed fracking fluids in her water, including propylene glycol and, and, and glycol ethers, and two undisclosed contaminants. Um, this hasn't come out so far that the actual fracking fluid was in people's water in Dimmick. They had drilling muds in their water, had, they had gas in their water. But this, to me, was really a shocking moment. Well, Abram, you've been covering this. Uh, you're one of the experts uh, among, in the journalistic community on, on fracking. Uh, give us a quick summary of what the process is and what the concerns are about it. Hydraulic fracturing enables gas companies to access a deeply buried reserve that's uh, trapped uh, thousands of feet underground, uh, like tiny little bubbles frozen in rock. And uh, the fracturing is essentially to stimulate that rock, and they pump, uh, in the case of East Marcellus Shale, millions of gallons of uh, a fluid mixture that's chemicals and water and sand down there uh, under enormous pressure. And it, it literally fractures the rock and releases all those little bubbles of gas so they can flow back up and, and be produced. The question is, what happens to all of those chemicals as they're being mixed on the ground, when they get pumped underground, and when they're taken back out as, as waste, as a byproduct from the drilling? And what has happened in some of the uh, areas, especially out west, that you have uh, reported on? Well, anecdotally, as you travel around the country, you see uh, consistent patterns of contamination. Uh, people have methane in their drinking water. People are able to light their tap water on fire. Uh, numerous uh, folks that I met with had their wells explode. Uh, there are contaminants in, uh, in drinking water wells in some places, and there have been uh, hundreds, thousands of, of spills involving fracture fluid or fracture fluid waste uh, that have left uh, benzene and other carcinogenic contaminants in uh, streams and small lakes and in, in drinking water supplies. 
Uh, and, well, Josh, in New York uh, State, uh, especially here in New York City, there's huge concern because so much of the New York City drinking water uh, uh, is comes from upstate and has always been known uh, as a uh, as an extremely clean water supply for the people of New York City. Well, for New York City, it's the largest unfiltered water supply in the world. And I wanted to draw attention to what's actually happening in New York. New York State Senate passed a moratorium bill at the 11th. Actually, it was at two o'clock in the morning, and the assembly had gone out of session. This was in, uh, I think, the beginning beginning of August. And this is the only uh, state government or significant government that's uh, moving towards passing a moratorium. And, and I, the pressure is right now on Sheldon Silver um, to bring that bill to the floor in the Assembly and on Governor Patterson to sign it. It would be the first time that something like that has happened. And I think every, all eyes are on New York right now. And there were a lot of calls for that at the EPA hearings yesterday about the, uh, the moratorium bill in the, in the Assembly, but also to ask the EPA to step in now to start regulating this process now, um, even before their study. Because what I've seen in, in touring with the film all over the country, and uh, I'm sure we'll get more this week in New York, um, is that uh, people are incredibly concerned and there, there are contamination stories and, and there is a frustration that there hasn't been enough science that this, this detective mission, which is taking place in so many places around the country, especially in Pavilion, Wyoming, and in independent citizens investigating a pandemic, that there is the need for this federal investigation to, to speed up and to stop the suffering that's been going on around the country. So that's, there, was a, there were a lot of calls for that. Well, Josh, let's turn to a clip from your, uh, your documentary, Gasland, about the chemicals used in fracking. This clip features Dr. Theo Colborn. We've begun to look at what's being used to drill a well, data that the government should be collecting but isn't collecting. We've been able to get our hands on some of that. Because of the exemptions, fracking chemicals are considered proprietary, like the special sauce for a Big Mac or the secret formula for Coca-Cola. The only reason we know anything about the fracking chemicals is because of the work of Theo Colborn. By chasing down trucks, combing through material safety data sheets, and collecting samples, Theo has identified 596 different chemicals in 900 chemical products. Every environmental law we wrote to protect public health is ignored. But the neurological effects are very insidious. Three years ago, I started getting really dizzy. At first, you may just have headaches. Then the next thing, you might have ringing in your ears. I thought I had an inner ear infection. I went to my doctor, and she's kind of, your ears are clean. Or you may be a little disoriented, or you may feel a little dizzy. So they sent me down for a CAT scan. But eventually, you may feel what is called peripheral neuropathy. And when you get to this stage, you have irreversible brain damage. For the last four years, I have these lesions in my brain don't know where they came from. You may begin to get swelling. I hurt everywhere in my body, my legs, my feet, everywhere. Your extremities, especially the arms and the legs. I couldn't move. I couldn't reach my face to eat. I never know where the pain is going to be. The pain can be excruciating. A clip from Josh Fox's film Gasland. Uh, Josh, the issue of the chemicals and the reluctance of the industry to divulge what it's using. Yeah, well, this is the big detective story here. I mean, it's very hard to test for something that you don't know what if you don't know what it is. Um, you, the EPA has actually had to invent tests to find chemicals um, of a certain chemical class in Pavilion, Wyoming, where uh, r results have just come out um, that there are these fracking chemicals in people's water wells. It's been very frustrating that the industry actually is not required um, to disclose what they're injecting in the ground because of the exemption to the Safe Drinking Water Act in 2005. And that's part of what the FRAC Act would do. The, fr the other part of the FRAC Act would bring um, uh, hydraulic fracturing under EPA